Hello and welcome to Talk Gnosis for June 22nd, 2013. I'm Father Tony Sylvia and joining me from slightly to my right, Bishop Thomas Langley. Bishop, hello. Hey, Father, how you doing? When was the last time you were described as slightly to somebody's right? Uh, it almost never happens. Uh, happy supermoon, right? That's a thing. Absolutely. Happy solstice. Oh yeah, that too, right? Yesterday was a very long day. Yes, yes it was. Very long. They're getting shorter all the time. Uh, so tonight we are going to do something that we like. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Gospel of Thomas. Tonight we're going to talk about Logia number six. Um, Logion number six. I can't get Greek straight. Anyway, uh, I will read it to you all. Um, his disciples asked him and said to him, Do you want us to fast? How should we pray? Should we give to charity? What diet should we observe? Jesus said, Don't lie and don't do what you hate, because all things are disclosed before heaven. After all, there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed, and there is nothing covered up that will m remain undisclosed. So, uh, Bishop, uh, Jesus is telling us here that in order to be a Gnostic, we don't have to do anything, and uh, we can just, you know, kind of tell everybody how spiritual we are, and we'll be fine, right? Yeah, you know, I, I see this, um, this particular saying, saying number six, and also uh, saying number 14, uh, pulled out quite a lot by, by folks who want to uh, make exactly that point. Well, Gnostics don't need to fast or pray or observe, you know, oppressive external spiritual things because, you know, we're, we're spiritual inside in the heart, and that's what really counts. And um, I think if we if we would just uh, set that agenda aside for a minute and and look at maybe what he's saying, not just in these sayings, but elsewhere in the Gospel of Thomas, I think we get a more balanced uh, picture of, and, and maybe some insight that would actually challenge us to move beyond where we are. Um, because it's interesting also, if you, read, if you read the complete gospel, you'll find Jesus says a variety of things about fasting and spiritual practice. In um, saying 27, Jesus says, If you do not fast as regard the world, you will not find the kingdom. If you do not observe the Sabbath as a Sabbath, you will not see the Father. Um, and then also in saying 104, the, uh, the disciples say to Jesus, um, Come, let us pray today and let us fast and Jesus says uh, what is the sin that I've committed and wherein have I been defeated but when the bridegroom leaves the bridal chamber then let them fast and pray so I, I think if we if we look at these sayings as a whole as a set and we look at what else we know from, from parallel pieces of scripture I think it's fair to say that that Jesus is not condemning fasting and praying. He's not condemning alms, which is giving money to poor people. Um, because if you're gonna if you're gonna use these verses to say, well, then we shouldn't fast, and if you're gonna use these verses to say, well, then we shouldn't pray, then you also need to be consistent and say, well, then we shouldn't give things to poor people, um, which would make you an excellent Republican, but a very poor Gnostic, I, in my opinion. Uh, the views expressed on Talk Gnosis do not necessarily reflect the views of anybody. <laughs> well, but I, but I think if we, if, we take it in, if we take these verses in context, I think what we're seeing is a contrast between merely external practices, the practices of the Pharisees, um, who throughout the canonical Gospels, Jesus condemns the Pharisees not because they fast and pray, and not because they... they make use of religious observances as part of their spiritual work, but because they do so without inner transformation. The problem isn't practice, the problem is hypocrisy or spiritual practice that's not linked to inner transformation. Yes, and um, the in the canonical Gospels, but right before Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer to the disciples, um, the part that nobody mentions is Jesus says, when you pray, don't go to church and don't pray out loud go into your closet or go into a little hidden room, you know, be by yourself and and pray this prayer. And so I think that also speaks to what we're talking about here is the, the, the practice is not for the sake of showing everybody how spiritual you are and how, how good you are and look at how much money I gave to charity, you know, that that's the same kind of impulse, but rather 
you know, the, the, you do the spiritual work, you do it for yourself, and that's it, right? Well, yeah, I, I, and I think even, even beyond the question of um, external observances and hypocrisy, which I think is an important point, looking at the whole context of what Jesus says about fasting, praying, almsgiving, giving dietary observances, etc. I, I think even in 6, what we see is Jesus speaking to the point of these practices. If we break it down, the disciples say, do you want us to fast? How shall we pray? Shall we give alms? And what diet shall we deserve? And Jesus immediately points them to the goal of the practice. He says, don't tell lies and don't do what you hate. Which seems like a pretty straightforward statement until we unpack it a little bit. Um, you know, Gurdjieff, when, when somebody begins the, uh, the Gurdjieff work, one of the first things that he would tell them is to stop lying to yourself. And the, the lie, the chief lie that we tell ourselves is the false identity that we've created, which is not our true eye. And it's not even a singular eye. It's a series of what he would call false eyes. And whether we want to look at it from a Gurdjieff perspective or not, I think there's a valid point there that the self um, that, we, that we hold up and identify with and cling to is not ourself. And that's the chief lie. And the first step in spiritual work is beginning to detach yourself from the false identity that you've created. And then Jesus goes on to say, and don't do what you hate. You don't know what you hate until you know who you are. You may know what you, what, you know, what makes you feel good or, you know, what titillates the senses, but that's a different question. We're talking about a deeper level here. We're talking about your, your true identity and what you really hate and what you really will versus just want and what you really hate versus just dislike and part of what happens in the spiritual practice of fasting for instance is you begin to um, develop a detachment and a perspective towards the things of the world um, and it's very important today because today's culture tells us you know, shop till you drop, he who dies with the most toys and wins uh, from you know, 24 hours a day, we're bombarded by by advertisement, whether it's overt advertisement or just through the various cultural mediums. This is what life is supposed to be like. You know, eat all you want, spend all you want. You know, titillate the flesh, and and all these false desires are created for us, and they're not they're not real. There's there's things that somebody else has thought of, someplace else to sell us. And so we don't really know what we like or dislike. We don't know what we hate. And that requires the spiritual work where we begin to strip away detachment, our attachment to these things, and develop an attachment from the world that allows us some perspective. So if I could rephrase that slightly, you, in order to really understand what it is that you hate, you first have to understand what it is that you kind of feel like you don't like. You know, it's, it's a... a, a uh, almost a, a, an octave of difference. Yeah, and it, it, right, and it, of course, it all begins with self knowledge, and that's what this is a call to. It's a call to authenticity and self knowledge through spiritual practice, through an authentic spiritual practice, which traditionally within within the Christian context has always included fasting and always included um, prayer and always included almsgiving. Um, these are practices that have fallen by the wayside in, in most of Christianity, but they were universal in the early church, and there's no, um, there's no really deep contemplative tradition in the church that doesn't involve all three. But they involve all three in a way that takes you deeper within yourself into the interior castle, into self-knowledge. All right. Um, I think we're going to get into uh, some more detail on this when we get to Logion 14. Uh, and 27, yeah. So um, let's uh, let's call it there. Uh, okay. I just want to tease 27 before we get to it, because I know you and I are both looking forward to that. The uh, the particular verse there where Jesus says, if you do not fast as regards the world, you'll not find the kingdom. And if you don't observe the Sabbath as a Sabbath, you'll not see the Father. Um, Well-known scholar April DeConnick interprets these verses within the context of spiritual practice, within a whole practice of Gnostic ascent that Jesus refers to 
when he gives the three sayings to Thomas, and he later says, "I can't tell you because then you would stone me." So, but we'll we'll get into that in the coming weeks. Uh, yeah, and the book he's referring to where that is discussed is uh, "Seek to See Him" is what that's called, and um, it's currently the the book on Gnosticism that I'm geeking out the most about. So, uh, yeah, um, big plug there for that book. Uh, but anyway, so we are. Uh, before we close it out, I just wanted to uh, remind people that we have our um, Gnostic Learning Center, which is starting up, classes starting up a couple of days, just, you know, a little over a week from now. Um, so uh, it's not too late to register, although it's getting pretty close. Uh, we are giving until Wednesday uh, a 10% off if you use the code Grand Opening, one word, Grand Opening, at checkout. So if you get this before Wednesday the 26th, yes, 26th, um, please do sign up for one of our classes at the Gnostic Learning Center, and uh, you'll get 10% off if you use the code Grand Opening. Um, I think that was all the news we had. Is that right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions about this Logian, please do give us uh, an email at talknosis at gnosticnyc.com, or as always, leave some comments in the comment section below. We've been getting some pretty good comments on some past videos over the last couple of days, so uh, um, thank you for watching our videos and, and, uh, and sharing your opinions with us. We do appreciate that. Uh, show notes and the social media links for Gnostic NYC will be in the description. Uh, coming up at Gnostic NYC, actually we don't really have anything nailed down quite yet for any of the coming up at Gnostic NYC. Uh, we're still in the process of working on that. If you have any subjects you'd like us to uh, to talk about in a lecture at Gnostic NYC, please do let us know. Mass twice a month. That's right. So uh, yeah, check out GnosticNYC.com for all of our upcoming programs, including the Mass of the Alexandrian Gnostic Church and the Apostolic Joanite Church that happen in Manhattan on the first and fourth Sundays of the month. Uh, and if you are uh, enjoying our programs and you would like to see us uh, bring in some more new and exciting guests, uh, some from out of town. We're looking to fly some folks in and, and really have some great guests for our future lecture series. Please do donate. Visit our website. On the left-hand side, you'll see a button that says Support Us. If you click that, that will take you to a secure donation page. All donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. And this has been a production of Gnostic NYC. If you enjoy the show, please share it with your friends. Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or of any other organization. No animals were harmed during the production of this show. For more talk notes, tune in live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Good night.